So I'm with David Caraway from Delta, Colorado. Yep. Welcome, David. Um, Hi. I'm at uh, today is August 11th, 2018. We are attending a Tesla Tech conference in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And um, I want to start. Can you introduce yourself just briefly? Yeah. Hi, I'm Dave Garraway here to talk about. The ways in the ether, the right-handed and left-handed right ways. Here, like we go to this face. Okay, this cool. Face. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm here to talk about the different ways in the ether that surround us all day long and keep our electrons spinning, and uh, the good ways and the bad ways as well. The right-handed ways are good ways. Uh, you'll notice in the Bible everything is right. You know, a right is good, and Jesus sits on the right hand of God, and uh, righteousness is truth and honesty and you know, right on, right? Uh -huh. So that's how righteousness became righteous, is because we're actually in a universe comprised of both left-handed and right-handed waves. However, you see the first wave in our universe, the primal wave is left-handed. We are born into sin. Sin means to move left uh -huh. in Greek. Uh -huh. And um, this, this sinful wave, this left-handed inward wave is the wave responsible for gravity. We're being pushed down to the earth right now, not pulled. Mm -hmm. And uh, the thing is, this wave goes all the way down to the nuclear level, uh, into an atom. It, goes, it spirals down and fractates as it goes. It breaks up in smaller and smaller waves, and eventually gets down to the nucleus of the atom, where it rotates the nucleus so fast, it spins it faster than light. And this causes the nucleus to leave this space-time continuum, jump through three other universes, and then come back later on. Now, when it comes back, it's radiating out right-handed energy that it's picked up in the other universes. These right-handed waves have to climb uphill against the incoming left-handed waves, and in doing so, they become much smoother, more organized, and more organizing. So right-handed waves are responsible for keeping stuff together, uh, cooling stuff down, organizing things, crystallizing things. And the thing is, they have more space within them you can squeeze more information into a right-handed spiral than you can a left-handed spiral because it's smoother. There was a guy yesterday talking about uh, magnets and electrical findings and how the North Pole smoothed out the, um, the water, mm. the uh, shape of the water and whatnot. Mm. That's because the right-handed ways are smoother and they do organize and smooth things out. And that was just one more small little um, affirmation for me for the theory that I'm working on. So can, you thing, can you define the right-handed and left-handed ways? Uh, clockwise is right-handed as you move forward, clockwise. Uh, okay, so... Or as you move forward, counterclockwise. So our regular screws are right-handed, right? Yes, they are. Righty-tiny, so lefty-loosey. Like There's a right -handed. reason for that. Right-handed. Correct, yes, uh, going left -handed forward. Left-handed goes the other way. Counterclockwise forward, yeah. Uh-huh, and uh, how about the DNA? Well, all our DNA, as you know, is uh -huh. right-handed uh, on this planet. There is no left-handed DNA anywhere, I believe, in the entire universe. Certainly not on this planet. Yeah, right. Uh -huh. Because it, um, <clears throat> that is the direction uh, of the wave that holds life together. Right-handed uh, spirals are, are easily held together and can hold more information, and they last longer than a left-handed spiral ever could. So that's why life has evolved consuming right-handed energy all day long. And uh, I noticed when I was in school, we were running around, um, you know, a sports uh, hall, mm -hmm. and we always would run in uh, in that direction, which is left-handed direction. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Well, you'll notice that left-handed um, in the pool, a dolphin will swim around left-handed. Also, they always go in counterclockwise circles. It's because lefty is loosey. There's, it's easier to go left than mm -hmm. it is right. And you can feel this on a piece of paper with a pen. If you make a right-handed circle, it takes a little more rotation, and it's a little harder to do than if you make a left-handed circle. Wow. Because there's more rotation in that right-handed path. So it's easier to go left than it is right, just a little bit. But it's it's the dark side of uh, All right. nature. It's the oh, evil was, side. Oh, oh, was good. Was good. Just one minute to, okay. to, to the light. To the to light, the light. okay. So your light is... I just noticed that you're not lit up. Okay, we continue. And um, I have this coil here, uh -huh. which is designed to catch both the right-handed and the left-handed waves in the ether. Uh -huh. As I mentioned, the first wave is left-handed in, 
it goes down to the nucleus, pushes the nucleus out, but when the nucleus of all the atoms in the room come back, they're radiating out right-handed energy. And this right-handed out energy spirals out, it bounces around the room, and it turns into right-handed in energy, which then goes back to the nucleus of the atom, or another atom, okay. and it bounces around, and then pretty soon there's left-handed out energy coming in. So there's four ways all together. Mm -hmm. Left in, right out, right in, and left out. Mm -hmm. Now this catches all four ways. <clears throat> Excuse me, it's important though to note that this starts always with a right-handed twist. Now these figure eights obey the phi spiral. So the first thing that happens is an electron comes down and it hits the first right-handed loop and the right-handed waves will push the electron in this right-handed loop around because this loop is based on the um, curvature of the phi spiral. So the first section is an inward section of the spiral mm -hmm. and the next section of this leaf is an outward section. Mm -hmm. So you have right in and then the electron jumps to the right out wave. Mm -hmm. and then on the other side you have left in and then it jumps to the left out wave. Mm -hmm. And this happens three times. Uh, there are 12 waves so you want to catch each one of them. And so the electron's not only going around and around and constantly changing direction, which means it's under constant acceleration, as long as it's constantly changing direction, mm -hmm. but it's going in and out. It gets pulled in, and then it gets left out in this rotation. Each level is in, 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 and then mm -hmm. out, out, out. Mm -hmm. So that's another compounding of accelerations. That's what this coil is Let based on. Let me follow on. it. Let me follow it. So it goes, which, which is the start? Uh, this is the start here. It goes here. Uh. Then it goes here. Okay, I will reproduce my hand movement. Like, then it goes, I assume it goes here, there, here, there, here, there, here, there, here, there. All right. At the bottom it goes, yeah, it goes right, left, right, left, right, left, left, right, left, right, left, right. Oh, it now comes back. Yeah, it comes back. But it, it does two lefts on the bottom. It oh, goes so right, it doesn't left. go like that. So it goes. First is the eight, and then goes to the next level eight, and then next level eight. Correct. And then goes. And then it takes a ninety degree turn. And then goes eight that and okay, so that's the magic trick. S eight down, eight down, eight down. Then left, right. Nine, nine degrees turns. Right. Left, uh, right, left, right, left, right, left, left, right, left, right. right. Correct. You and, got it. And what is the meaning of that? Well, you'll notice that the first three eights are bent downwards. And this is so they can catch the incoming downwards. vibrations. Correct? Mm -hmm. They're bent, you know, this is a 72 degree angle here between the two figures, okay. eights here. Okay. So the first three eights are bent down 72 degrees. The last three eights, which are 90 degrees out of phase, are bent up three, um, mm -hmm. three you know, I mean 72 degrees upward. This is to catch the waves coming out of the ground. Mm -hmm. And um, so I've noticed that when this coil is suspended above a jar of lentils, um, that the lentils will sprout sooner and thicker and beefier than a control group set on the kitchen table just a few feet away. And uh, I've noticed, you know, you put water under here, it'll jive up the water. You can drink the water and you can feel the energy in it. Because this, it attracts the ether and it focuses it as it's utilizing it to push around electrons. And uh, I have a lot more experiments to do with this. I believe it can be used not only to promote plant growth, but also to heal. Mm -hmm. because it focuses the right-handed life energy and uh, will promote healing. And uh, although I have not done any human trials yet, I hope to do so this year. And uh, a lot of other things might be done with this. I hope to make lots of coils. This should be machined. You know, this is like a Mr. Wizard experiment. I did this on my own. All right. All right. I think if it was made to spec, if you had a computer print this out, yeah, the effect easy. would be much more it's easy, you know, like, to do. intense. Um, I have a friend who does uh, printing Really? I mean, he does it from plastic, though. That's okay. Why is it okay? Well, we could dip it in, in um, a conductive solution. Ah, conductive yeah. plastic. Yeah. You can do conductive plastic. So conductive plastic, like high carbon plastic. Right, that would work. Uh, and then he does it like in pieces. He can do this. Uh, he mm -hmm. takes a 3D right. computer simulation, cuts it in pieces in the computer, and then uh, computer, uh, the machine would print it, like print it or cut it, and then he would glue it together like just glue it and that would work that would work yeah i was thinking if you could print it do they have to be insulated 
They should be, mm -hmm. but they're not. I mean, it still works without the insulation because uh, electrons will follow the easiest path of conduction. Sure. So then rather than leaving the solder to short yeah, out, I agree. It'll, it'll follow the path. And also yeah. aluminum is a little oxidized, so it's not a perfect... No, this is magnetic. basically tin and lead. Oh, it's tin and this, lead. Yeah. I make sure to use solder that's non-magnetic. Wow. Because that way I can show off the, uh, the way it works. Tin and which lead. Is, um, because it's interfering, you know, part of my theory is there's a, um, as this energy implodes into us, it's imploding into everything and everybody, there's, a, there's a, a place halfway between you and me where the energy breaks off and starts falling towards me, and if it's closer to you, it breaks off and starts falling into you. This is like the Lagrange point between the Earth and the Moon, where gravity mm -hmm. is stronger on one side than the other. We all have gravity, so the energy is falling in over here, and the energy is falling in to you. Now there's like a wall between us where this happens. And this is the edge of the envelope. I call it a tensor envelope, where the energy is falling into a particular thing. Now this, because it interferes with the, the waves, will pick up the edge of the envelope, and it will react to the imbalance of energy, as, as like right in the middle between us. It will go one way or the other. So the way I like to demonstrate this is to hold it near stuff that's non-magnetic, like wood, for instance. So what you do is, you dangle it near things, and it's a subtle effect. I want you to do it yourself so you'll feel it, but you can feel it pull and twist and rotate mm -hmm. when you get it near certain things. Got it. Water. So it's an advanced, uh, how do you call it, frame? Or there is some, some, some word of dozing, yeah. Yeah, it, device. it is an advanced dowsing device. Dowsing device. Yeah, it really is. Let's move back to the like, light. Like here, mm -hmm. I can feel something under the floor. Oh, wow. Um, and I just want to check it out. I haven't really run around this room yet. Um, it reacts really well between two pieces of wood, for instance. Like that, uh -huh. I can uh -huh. feel. Uh -huh. uh, I don't want to photograph the, the rest of the room. Okay, well, let me, let me just take a second here. All right. It uh, also goes well over water, too. I should bring out a jug of water. Oh, wow. On the water? But, uh, huh? On the water? Above the water? Yeah, in the water. It'll detect the presence of the water there. So oh, well, uh, let me let me grab a chunk of water. Here. All right. See it kind of swirling around here. But I notice it best over the floor because there's all kinds of pipes and stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And. I showed it to a guy yesterday that could feel it very much between his legs, too. It'll, uh -huh. pick, up, it'll pick up your own field. Interesting. And um, I never really tried that, but uh, yeah, it works great between your legs, too. So um, give it a shot. All right. Well, oh, it's pretty light. I thought it would be Yeah, fair. yeah. You want me to hold this? Uh, no, I will hold it because um, okay. because I want to make sure it's, it's filming what I'm doing. So, All right. so this is the control. We're moving it around here, no water here. And uh, do I need to get into a special state or not? No, just, uh, you know, try your luck holding in your different things. Like All the right. mirror. Oh, mirror, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mirror is important, okay. Yeah, that should make it balance. Mirror, and now we go away from the mirror. And now we go to the water. And we go see around it? the water. See it move? I do see it move. Uh, my question is all, as always is, is it sure important... You don't need to hold that camera because it's hard to do what you're no, doing. No, no, you go ahead. Uh, come here. Okay. So my question is, as usual, where is uh, subjectivity and where it's objective? So if it was a robot doing that without understanding, would the force change? Or is it important that well, I'm a, a conscious absorber? Which sure, I understand. Is involved in a that. lot of people think it's psychosomatic or maybe yep. it's your own will making it do things. Uh -huh. I have a friend that uh, I demonstrated this at a national philosophy uh, convention in uh, mm -hmm. Maryland a couple years ago. And this scientist was so interested that he flew to Los Angeles and had me show him how to make them. And uh, he got a hotel room and I went over there and I wrote it all down and showed him how to make one. He made one and it worked. Mm -hmm. And to prove that it worked, he went back to his place in Washington and built a machine, which is basically, and he just sent this to me, it's basically a balance beam. Uh -huh. And it's got um, some one weights on here, mm -hmm. you know, balance counterweights. No electronics. And no electronic. Well, it's got a laser oh, at laser. the end, a little laser pointer, right? 
So you put this on one end and you balance it with the, the counterweight, mm -hmm. and then the laser's here, and then he slides like a case of bottled water underneath. And this gets attracted to the water and pulls down the balance beam. And he All makes right. he makes marks on the wall where the laser is hitting. So the laser's hitting here, he moves right. in the water. Can you help opening it? Okay, sure. I can hold it. So, so let's it, do that experiment. We have an experiment that actually proves this does affect so here, um, the you gravity. Can, you hang it. That mass effect. Now there is no human involved. It's all automatic, right? Right, right. All technology. Now we move the jar of water around and see if it reacts to the water by itself. It swings for a very long time. It's hard to get it to stand still. Yeah. Yeah, just give it like a minute. You know, no, no, no. I should be able to to calm it down using my. Maybe your Ricky will work on it, yeah. My uh, interventions. A, lo a lot of people can feel if they if you oh, put your hand underneath. It's pretty static now. Pretty static. Not super static, but it's stable. <laughs> also, if you're into Ricky, you can feel fields. Of course. So I bet if you put your hand right here, you'll feel like I can feel it now. Like, oh, I'm sorry. Ah. Yeah, you know how we do it? We uh, usually put the water under so the re resistance of the water kind of slows it down. Uh-huh, I see. Like a, a bath. If you put your hand under, can you feel like a cool little I want breeze? I stop it first. All right. Okay, it stopped, more or less. Now, on the receiving hand. So left hand is receiving, interesting. Okay, left hand is receiving, let's see, from above control. Control in the distance. So I feel the energy here. Let me see mm -hmm. if I feel it. Oh, I feel that. You know, it's a little different, but mm -hmm. even if I do the control here, I still feel the energy. So it's mm -hmm. not, it's not that the energy is. Um, yeah, there is a beam here which I feel. Yeah. Like, uh, like creates kind of warped. Uh huh. Go yeah. side, sideways. Somehow. Going a little sideways. That's because my coil is kind of. You know, <laughs> it's not really well made. All right. But let's see if the, if the water makes any difference. Oh, you're thinking it would start to oscillate? It? Yeah, it should a little. I was thinking. Can you hold it? Sure. Hold it here. So you see, it's aimed properly. Okay. So now, suppose I move water in a circle. or kind of try to magnetize it. Yeah, yeah, I saw it move. I would say it didn't fall from the thing, it didn't mm -hmm. jump, so it wasn't a super strong effect. No, it's the a subtle that was a saddle, but not super strong. No, it's true, it is subtle. I wish well, it was stronger. Let's yeah. uh, keep talking about things. Do you have anything else to, to show? You wanted to show something else, no? Uh, not really. I mean, I've got um, okay. other stuff on my video. That all right, I, have, all right. I have a PDF and it shows it on the screen and it's real well, nice. Rather than ask my usual question. So, first question, we are, we are thinking that DNA, a right-handed double helix, mm -hmm. double helix, like goes like that, double, mm -hmm. uh, that it, it is uh, a trans-dimensional converter. Mm -hmm. It takes chemical energy from us and electrical thoughts and stuff like that, converts it transdimensionally into, you know, some other dimension to the spirit dimension or mm -hmm. ether dimension or etheric body dimension and then brings back the information. And the information is of multiple kinds. It, for the brain, it's uh, mind information. Okay, for the heart, it would be heart-mind information, and for the cells and health, it would be like health information. So, mm. so we think DNA is the, the key transformer, transmitter, transdimensional transmitter in the body. Mm. And you seem to be uh, very interested in the ether side, so can you speculate on the mechanisms? Well, I kind of believe that aging is caused by the unraveling of the DNA. Uh -huh. And and if you unwrapping, use right hand unwrapping. unwrapping, yeah. Uh -huh. If you use the energy that this coil can harness and build coils particularly geared for grabbing the right handed waves and focusing them, mm -hmm. and you bombard the DNA with right handed waves, it makes sense that if you can resonate with the 
shape and spiral the correct frequencies of the DNA, you will serve to wrap it up again. So mm -hmm. you could probably reverse aging with right-handed spiral torsion fields, I believe. Can you define torsion fields? Well, they, they, you know, those are the waves that I was talking about. There's 12 different waves in this room about right it. now, mm -hmm. and I call them all torsion fields. Okay. So anything that, that provides a twist, you know, in the ether, the actual twisting of the ether is a torsion field. Super. Um, in Reiki, uh, actually, maybe more in Qigong, uh, there is a movement, circular, right-handed movement, mm. and we create the vortex incoming energy if, it, if the patient is down below. Mm -hmm. Then we bring the energy in, but before we bring the energy in, we first want to take the negative energy out, so we take it out by left-handed movement. Oh, cool. So we imagine the vortex that comes out, unscrews from the... Uh, like we remove the pain this way, the pain and uh, blockages, we remove it like with a, a left-handed pull it out, huh? left-handed out movement, right? yeah. yeah, out, left-handed up and out, out. out. So the spiral, mm -hmm. the helix going out, and then we bring back the good energy and put the healing mm. in. That's uh, I know a guy that does that uh, himself on his uh, minerals. He makes sea minerals. Uh -huh. And he puts the bottle inside of a left-handed wound um, tubing. You know, it's water tubing, right? Mm -hmm. So it's got many, many left-handed uh, windings to it. Mm -hmm. And um, and he turns it on, and this energizes his his, um, his sea mineral mix, right? And at first, I was confused. I thought, you know, I used to be all right-handed energy is the only way to go, right? Mm -hmm. You know, left is evil. Let's avoid that. That's bad mm -hmm. for you. Mm -hmm. But I realized that what he's doing is he's pulling out the left-handed energy from the sea mineral mix and mm -hmm. allowing the natural right-handed energy of the ether to replace it and mm -hmm. flow into it. So left-handed energy does have its uses. It's not completely bad or evil. It's just very tricky. It's hard to handle. I've had uh, industrial accidents using it. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, you know, I've had things, well, I've had things like almost blow up. Uh, these sensor coils, you can't put these near compressed gas. You gotta keep them away from compressed gas. And the left-handed energy attracts heat. So if you're messing around with left-handed energy and left-handed spirals and stuff, keep it away from compressed gas and, and uh, anything that's flammable. Because I've almost started fires and it caused propane tanks to blow up and stuff like that. But how did you create the, the waves, left-handed waves? Uh, left-handed spirals, you know, experimenting with Oh, just by material spirals. Yeah, yeah, regular, you know, yeah, spirals. You just created and, See, the, the, the dimensions of this coil are wound up um, spirals, really. So that coil, you're just looking at a, an exotically wound right-handed spiral. Okay. And if I'd started the co uh, coil left-handed, it would be a left-handed coil, but it's mm -hmm. not. I start all my coils with right-handed energy. If you're going to make these tensors, you should always start them right-handed, and then you can put a lot of left-handed stuff in there, but you start them right-handed and you end them right-handed, and it keeps all the, the left-handed stuff contained. You don't want to make these things, you don't want to start them with open-ended. You know, if you start it left, you're leaving it at open end, and it'll fly apart, it'll decay, It'll unravel, it'll you know blow up in your face. So make sure if you're going to build any of these tensors to make them right-handed. Gotcha. And I'm, I'm hoping maybe I could send you one of these and you could use it on a patient and see... Uh, I don't do any patients, really? but I do uh, healing myself. So it's, it's mm -hmm. not medical, it is more like spiritual, but yeah, mm -hmm. we can do that. Reiki, Reiki patients, whatever. Not, not medical patients, Reiki, right, spiritual right. patients. Uh -huh. uh, we don't treat disease we treat spiritual problems mm. all right anyway uh, let me see uh, my last question was about telepathy uh, do you have any experience with telepathy a little bit tell me well I uh, I know I can send okay I uh, well, I let's practice it huh let's practice it okay so um, send me a, a, num a number silently and I'll, tr I'll try to guess it out one out of ten uh, one uh, from one to ten from one to ten. all right send it now mm -hmm. mm. six what was it eight 
All right, let's start again. Okay. Three? Yep. Oh, wow. Copy that time. 50% success rate. Yeah, Let's so stop. At, uh, <laughs> maybe we can go. <laughs> but I mean, we, we get you know, on, on camera, we don't want too much. Anyway, yeah. uh, I now me, sends, me sending now. Let me see. I have to choose one first. Okay. Sending now clearly. Two? Nine. Nine. Let's do again. Hold on a second. Let me All pick right. one. Hmm. Sending now clearly. Five? One. Ah. All right. Altogether, we have 25% <laughs> success rate. Maybe plus or plus or minus. Oh, well. Anyway, uh, tell me more. I just had this friend. We were on a trip, and I was going to go. We were in Santa Cruz, and I was going to go look up a buddy of mine who was going to college there. And I tried to track him down, and I found out his mother had just died, so I couldn't see him. He was busy. Mm -hmm. And I went back to where my friend was, and uh, I walked up to him, and I go, Well, I can't see Danny today. And he said, Yeah, I know. His mother died. And I go, How did you know? And he goes, You told me. And I go, No, I didn't. <laughs> and I didn't. I hadn't told him a thing. And he goes, Oh, well, I don't know how I knew. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that was pretty weird. That was the one psychic experience I had. All right, uh, we, I'm, I'm approaching the idea to build a, a device or a helmet or a couple helmets or whatever, mm -hmm. which would able be able to help people to connect telepathically to each other, and it would be like normal people, like mainstream, out of the street people without any spiritual experience or preparation. Mm -hmm. So the, the idea that you know you should be able to take random people and connect them. Uh, do you have any ideas how to do that? Any suggestions? Well actually I've been wanting for a while to make a hat with these three figure eights embedded in the hat. Okay. You know, so it'd be like eight, right. eight, 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 eight. So All right. you'd have twelve different eights here and I think it would resonate with the ether waves and it might be a great antenna. Because I, I would like to experiment more with these as a radio antenna. But I bet they would be better antennas for psychic energy than anything else, because I think the psychic energy is working on scalar waves. And this Can you define scalar waves? No, I can't. I just saw a whole presentation about them, and uh, I still can't really understand what they are. I think they're, they're waves that are defined by temporal difference. Uh -huh. by their, their wave that... Um, is a piece of time going at one rate and then the next little piece of time is going at a slower rate and then so it's a wave in time it, it's time variation possible so when they get sent out there's no energy involved there's only the stretching and condensing of the ether which is time itself this i know that the implosion of the ether is allows time to happen time is a side effect of the movement of space Mm -hmm. So space is imploding into us and allowing and keeping our electrons in orbit and pushing us along and causing all the forces of nature. Mm -hmm. And as time happens, you know, as space implodes mm -hmm. into us, that makes time happen. So time is just a side effect of this movement of the ether. And if you slow the ether down, time will slow down. And you can speed it up and time will speed up. Mm -hmm. And um, actually, it's, it's paradoxical. It's the other way around because a gravitational field will slow time down more to the observer. That's mm -hmm. Einstein's work, and that, it, this verifies Einstein's work. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I think scalar waves are, are time differentials being propagated, mm -hmm. not energy or electromagnetic fields being propagated. There's just slight variations in time. You know, right-handed movement makes time go faster, and left-handed movement makes time go a little slower. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's kind of a, a Wiccan piece of knowledge. The mm -hmm. witches know that. Mm -hmm. And um, right-handed movement makes things a little heavier, mm -hmm. and left-handed movement is levitation, makes things lighter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'd like to do: is make a hat with these and see if I can't, uh, you know, make two hats with exactly the same dimensions in the coils and whatnot, and maybe even like run microcurrents through them and stuff. And I bet they would be telepathic amplifiers. 
that's what I'm looking for, like telepathic amplifiers. All right. Thank well, you very much. I'll have to send you my hat. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, possible. Yeah, I would. I would appreciate that. Okay. But, I mean, we're talking touch. about two hats. Two uh, hats. We need two hats. Okay. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. So they have to be identical. So the tuning would be similar, identical. Mm -hmm. Okay. I can do that. All right. So we. I have uh, David Caraway from Delta. Colorado. Mm -hmm. If anybody wants to uh, um, to con contact you, what would be your contact? Uh, it's on my video. Just pronounce it. Just pronounce it. Okay. Uh, my uh, email address is phiman p h i m a n eight 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 okay. at yahoo mm -hmm. dot c o dot u k, and I prefer you call me. Uh, 925-864-4896. Excellent. And if you want to order a coil, I've, I've sold a few before. You know, they're a hundred bucks. Are they so, handmade still? Huh? Yeah, they are always handmade. Takes me a couple hours to make them and it costs about 20 bucks in solder. So you're getting a good deal. <laughs> now, um, at some point they will have the machine made, right? I, well, maybe. I don't know. I like them handmade. I think uh, your chi goes into it. And, oh, uh, I see. I would like to experiment with machine made coils, but I don't know if they'll ever match uh -huh. the handmade because I think there's a lot of intention involved when you make them. Okay. You've got to think of what you're doing. And, and also, there's a lot of what I call micro rotations in there. I haven't gone into the part, you'll see in my video, that there are. Um, um, places in the spiral where energy bun bunches up. Have you ever taken a shower and looked down and see the water going down the drain in a spiral? Course, and you'll yes, see uh -huh. little spokes radiating out, mm -hmm. standing waves, mm -hmm. spokes radiating out. And you can even splash the drain and it'll disrupt all the spokes, but they'll come back in the same place. Right, uh -huh. right? Those are where the water accelerates and then it goes too fast and gets ahead of itself and bunches up mm -hmm. and then slows down and then reaccelerates and goes faster and punches. So I figured out how to figure out where those bumps in the road are. Mm -hmm. And what's happening is it's a phi acceleration inside of a phi acceleration. Mm -hmm. So the water goes faster, slower, faster, 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 slower, faster, faster, slower. So, and it's like one, two, three seconds faster, then one second slower, then one second faster then one second slower, then five seconds faster, then one second slower, then six seconds faster, and then so on. There's a pattern to it that you can figure out oh, wow. with this acceleration. It's, it's a pattern of 72 degrees per second per second as you, as you accelerate around and around. So instead of a linear gravitational acceleration, you can do a um, rotational mm -hmm. acceleration like that. And so the pattern is three, it's in my video, three, one, five, six, 12 1 for right handed spirals and 4 1 1 1 2 7 2 for left handed spirals. What are these numbers? Th these numbers are, are the nodal points in the spiral where energy bunches up and then smooths out again in its constant acceleration. Do they have a name, the sequence of the, na sequence, the, sequence of the numbers? Do they have a name? Like the Fibonacci sequence or any other No, sequence? I haven't really named them yet. I just call them accelerative sequences. All right. Okay. Uh, phi accelerative sequences. Phi, why is it phi? Uh, because everything in the universe obeys phi, you know, the number 16181. Oh. That's a, a, the phi spiral. The Fibonacci series generates it. Oh, got it. And Is it uh, golden mean ratio thing? Yeah, the golden mean. It's called phi, okay. That's or phi. Uh, phi is the length of the spiral 90 degrees going outward, getting bigger. It's 1.618 times bigger every 90 degrees. And phi is 0.618 times smaller going inward. Got it. So that's the phi and phi, and uh, everything in nature resonates. I forgot to, uh, to ask you about the aliens. Uh, what's your connection to the aliens? No, oh, well, I'd rather not talk about that. They're, they're pesky little suckers, you know. I think they channel down information to people once in a while. They do. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> of course, you know, you don't want the men in black banging on your door, do you? Uh, men in black are our friends. Are they? Yeah. Cool. Okay. They just keep an order in the universe, that's fine. Right, well, I don't think it's important where this information comes from. I think it's just important it gets utilized and used. Oh, no, I, I have, I, I feel a lot of connection to the aliens, so I really love the, you know, even thought about the aliens make me happy. Yeah, I think they're pretty cool too. Yeah. I think they've been around a long time and they, they've been channeling information to us for 
quite a while. And I, I bet like almost every other person on this conference is like pure alien and every <laughs> other just, you know. Talks to him, right? Like, uh, uh, yeah, every other one it would be like just unaware. Well, that lady yesterday with Trifinity, did you see her disclosure? No, saying that she notice. had a near-death experience and after Oh, yeah, huh? Uh -huh. Yeah, that she's, she's in contact. Yeah, I mean, yeah, many so of us are. I think yeah. many of us are, yes. All right. Thank you very much. Sure. Uh, David a pleasure. from Delta, Colorado, and access him through his phone, which we just, can you repeat it? And uh, Yeah, sure. My phone number is 925-864-4896. And if you'd like to see the 2011 presentation of what I've just been talking about, it's much better than this because uh, it has, you know, PDFs and graphs and all kinds of fun stuff and demonstrations and whatnot. You can find it on YouTube under, you go to YouTube and you type in Implosive Vortex Mechanics or my name, which is Gave Garroway, G-A-R-R-O-W-A-Y, Jr. Make sure to put it in the Jr. and get my dad. He was on TV. Or you can watch the presentation I did last summer here. Uh, it's in four parts. It's a two-hour workshop. One of the parts is messed up. I'm going to have to reload it. Uh, it should happen next month. But anyway, you can find that under Tensor Coil Workshop, where I go into real detail about how to make these coils and these fractal patterns that I instill in them. As I make the figure eight, I'm bending the, the solder in these patterns. So I make it like one, two, three, a little further, one, Got one, it. you know, like right, 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 left, right, one, two, three, four, five, left, one, two, three, four, five, six, right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, left, and then one right, and then, and then you repeat the pattern over and over again. Uh -huh. So you have one pattern for the right-handed loop, one for the left, and um, that's what really helps attract the energy because you're resonating with the spokes in the spiral of the ether as it implodes. Wow. Uh, what did your do, dad do? Why, why, why was he on television? He got me interested in science. He was the first host of the Today Show. First what? Host of host. the Today Show, yeah. Today Show, yeah. wow. Early Yay. morning show, yeah. He had a great time. Um, and what, what, where, how do you learn your stuff? What's the, your, your way of learning stuff? Oh, I just, I'm a good listener. I just close my eyes and let the universe... Actually, the universe poses questions to me. It says like, well, and then it's the Aristotelian method of teaching. It's like, well, what do you think? Would it be A or B? And why would it be A? And why would it be B? Uh -huh. And then I have to figure out, well, it wouldn't be A because that would rise and that would fall and that wouldn't work. Uh -huh. So it must be B, you know, and then I go on from there. So it's really, I get a series of questions coming to me and I kind uh, what, of have to figure your, stuff what out. What was your profession in the early days? I'm a salesman. A salesman? <laughs> yes, I am. What do you sell? I also am a DJ and I've done some drumming and stuff. I've sold everything. Oh, really? Office supplies, computers, water beds, light bulbs, condoms, candy, all kinds of stuff on the phone and in real life. Oh, gosh. All <laughs> so, right. <laughs> I get around. But I'm kind of retired now. I just want to work on this stuff. Excellent. Thank you very much. Have sure. Have a good day. Pleasure. Good day, everybody. Thank you.